If you're new to this channel, the reason I always do the worst of first is because I like to end the year on a positive note. I want to finish off the year thinking about all the movies I loved rather than all the movies that I didn't like. And so many other movie reviewers on YouTube do their best of first and then their worst of last, so I figured to just switch things up. And also, this is a list based on personal opinion, so if there's a movie that you think is one of the worst of the year that doesn't pop up on this list, then that either means I didn't hate it like everyone else did, or in the sense of Fifty Shades Free, I didn't see it. In fact, I even keep forgetting that Fifty Shades Freed exists. Every time somebody mentions that movie, I'm like, Wait, there was a third one? And it came out in 2018? Boy, I must have dodged that bullet. So yeah, don't expect Fifty Shades Freed on this list or in the Dishonorable Mentions, which I'm actually going to talk about right now because there are a handful of movies that I really did not like at all, but didn't really quite make the cut to the worst of list. First up is Proud Mary, which is a movie that I thought was going to be a very cool stylistic action movie, but instead it was boring, cliched, and has a very unlikable protagonist. The Darkest Minds is another movie I didn't like and kind of proves that the young adult genre is really at its last breath because this movie rips off stuff from Harry Potter, Stranger Things, X-Men, Star Wars. None of the characters are really likable and some of them actually do downright horrible things. If this isn't the death of the young adult genre in terms of movies, then I don't know what is. Red Sparrow is probably the most boring movie I saw in 2018. It was way too long, really didn't make a whole lot of sense, and it was a movie where I went, yeah, I'm getting kind of sick of Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, I don't dislike her at all, it's just I'm not madly in love with her like I was back when she was a mega star in 2012, 13, 14, and even 15. The Hurricane Heist would have been at number 10 in my worst of list if it was actually a movie that was so bad it's good, but this movie commits the biggest crime of being called Hurricane Heist and not living up to its name. Anything in this movie that's even close to being so bad it's good maybe lasts for 5 minutes, and they're all spaced out between 30 minutes of character development and just boring stuff. So this was just like Geostorm in the sense where I wanted it to be goofy, I wanted it to be over the top stupid, but it wasn't. That honor for a movie that's so bad it's good goes to the one-two punch of Venom and Robin Hood. Both movies are downright incompetent and fall into the realm of it's so bad it's good. I know a lot of people like Venom, but I cannot get on board with anyone that says this is legitimately a good movie. Now, if you like this movie because it's so bad it's good, then I could totally get behind that because between Tom Hardy's very bizarre performance that feels like he's in a different movie altogether, the very awkward comedy, Michelle Williams' terrible wig, the fact that Riot takes six months to get from Asia to San Francisco, and the mid credit scene with Woody Harrelson wearing a $5 Ronald McDonald wig telling Tom Hardy that when he gets out of prison, there's going to be carnage. I can totally be on board with this being a so bad it's good movie that I enjoy it. In fact, I actually had more fun watching Venom than I did Aquaman, and Venom is a much worse movie, I'll admit that right now. And then with Robin Hood, it is in that level of so bad it's good, just with less talent. None of the actors in this movie give a good performance, the action scenes are just as absurd as something in a video game or Fast and Furious movie, the clothes look like they're centuries out of place. It's just an overall mess of a movie. And the last dishonorable mention that I'll mention is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. There are quite a handful of things in this movie that I actually do like, but without a doubt, this is the most functionally stupid movie of 2018, and it boils down to the script. The dialogue is atrocious. Situations that the characters say or do is downright stupid. The fact that they put a volcano on Isla Nublar and nobody even acknowledged it in the past movies is stupid. It just really kind of proves that Colin Trevorrow is turning out to be one of my least favorite screenwriters in Hollywood along with Aaron Kruger. And the best thing I could say about this movie is that I got to talk a lot about it with the real rejects. So hey, something good came out of it. So those are my dishonorable mentions. But before we actually get into the worst of 2018, I have to bring out my biggest disappointment. This is something I do every year where there's one movie out there that I'm looking forward to. I'm excited to see it. And then when I walk out of the theater, I go, oh man. And for me, that honor or dishonor goes to Shane Black's The Predator. 
I was convinced that Shane Black could deliver the best Predator movie since the original because I love the original Predator. It's one of my top 100 favorite movies of all time. And Shane Black is in that movie, not just as an actor, but as a script doctor. So I thought he'd be perfect for the Predator, but no. In fact, I'm not even gonna blame Shane Black entirely. It is easy to blame him for this movie. And there are a few moments in this movie, particularly with the humor, where you can blame him and you're not wrong for blaming him. But I feel like with this movie changing release dates constantly, having the entire third act refilmed, and then making last minute cuts before the movie even comes out, it's very easy to blame Fox for all that. Especially when you consider that they have a history of interfering with these big budget movies. I mean, look no further than Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, the 2015 version of Fantastic Four. They have had a long history of just interfering with directors' work and it shows. And I feel like The Predator is just another victim of studio interference. I don't hate this movie like everyone else does. I'll admit there's a lot of cool things in it and the violence is pretty awesome. But this by all means should have been a better movie and it almost came close to being on my worst of list because the more I think about it, the more dumb it is. But what actually is on my worst of list? Well, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Number 10. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. This is actually the first of two movies on this list where I just feel sad that they're on my worst of list because I love the Harry Potter franchise. I have enjoyed the first Fantastic Beasts. Whenever it focused on Newt Scamander finding his magical creatures, I enjoyed it okay. But whenever it has to go into the plot with Grindelwald and Credence, it was not interesting. And this movie is pretty much everything I didn't like about the first Fantastic Beasts pumped up to 11. The plot is nonsensical. Characters come in who were supposedly dead or their story arcs concluded in the last movie and they bring them back with no explanation. They put in these little nuggets that try to tie into Harry Potter, which you don't need. This should easily have been a self-contained story. A lot of people like Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. I didn't because all I saw was just Johnny Depp playing another weird character. And I do not buy Newt Scamander as this big wizarding hero. It has nothing to do with Eddie Redmayne and how he plays the character because he actually does a good job. I'm just talking about the character of Newt Scamander. When he's dealing with his Fantastic Beasts, he's fine, I like him, but nobody in their right mind would ever trust this guy to go spy on the most dangerous wizard alive. Am I hopeful for the next three movies in this series? Not really, but you know what? If I'm gonna end this pick on a positive note, if Bumblebee proved that we can actually get a not just good, but great live action Transformers movie, then anything is possible. But right now, eh. Number nine. Truth or Dare, when it comes to Blumhouse movies, they've actually been on a roll uh, in the past couple of years because with movies like Get Out, Happy Death Day, Halloween, I'm on board with what they do. This movie is them going back to what they used to do where they just put out schlock. I'll admit it does have an interesting-ish concept, but the execution just seems silly. Any moment this movie gets to try to be suspenseful just doesn't work at all. In fact, it just makes it unintentionally funny, especially with those silly grins that everyone makes. Truth or dare. It just doesn't work. I can't do it right. <laughs> the characters aren't that interesting, and some of them are actually interchangeable to the point where I think someone dies and then they pop up later in the movie. And the ending, oh my god, the ending. Um, it's not as bad or what the fuck like with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but it is one of those things where I walked out of the theater going, You've got to be kidding me with this ending. No, 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 no. So yeah, um, not a good movie. Number eight. The Cloverfield Paradox. I wouldn't have even watched this movie if it wasn't for the buzz surrounding it after Super Bowl came out because I enjoy the first Cloverfield, but I don't love it. I love 10 Cloverfield Lane. Cloverfield Paradox, on the other hand, sucked ass. For me, it was just this big sign that Netflix will just pick up anything. If a big studio is not going to take it, then Netflix will just pick it up without 
any problem, no matter how shitty the movie is. Well, I guess that was just disproven a while ago, but we'll get to that a little later. But the science fiction of the movie sucks. Things just happen out of pure randomness with no explanation. The characters range from dull to unlikable. And the ending is probably the best part of the movie, but the best part of that ending is the last 10 seconds when the Cloverfield monster shows up. And even then, it just left me frustrated. This is a movie that is just wildly incomprehensive, and I I guarantee it wasn't even planned to be a Cloverfield movie. It's one of these things where I just don't get the hype between the Cloverfield franchise as a whole. I don't know why people want to dissect it. 10 Cloverfield Lane was a great movie. Cloverfield itself was just a very fun monster movie told in a style that we'd never really seen a monster movie told before. This was just pure trash and I did not like it. Number seven. Winchester. Now, even though I said that Red Sparrow was the most boring movie I saw of 2018 and it's not on this list, Winchester actually made me fall asleep twice. It is not an effective horror movie at all. I really couldn't figure out what was going on for a lot of it. Jason Clark is uncharismatic. Helen Mirren is well above this kind of movie. And most of the scares in the movie come from jump scares. And not only are they jump scares, they're jump scares of people opening doors, just like a normal person would. But there's that big do whenever someone opens a door. And I'm like, seriously? It's worse than in Halloween H2O when people just sneak up on Laurie Strode for no reason and they have to make it a jump scare. It is downright idiotic. But at the very least, it's not the worst horror movie of 2018. Number six. Holmes and Watson. This is the movie that proves that Netflix will turn down anything that the studios don't want. Because, oh my god, this is... I kind of wish I did a full review on this movie because this is really the worst Will Ferrell comedy out there. It's not funny. It's a Sherlock Holmes parody that it's just kind of tired. There are a lot of actors in this movie that are just wasted, like Steve Coogan, Ray Fiennes, Rebecca Hall, even John C. Riley. But Will Ferrell is the worst part about this movie. It's historically inaccurate. It's sexist. And the worst part about this movie for me is that for a movie where outlets are reporting people walking out, I somehow managed to see this movie with the only theater of people who stayed and were laughing hysterically. And I think that's just another layer of suffering when you're watching a comedy that you think is horrible. Like, it's bad enough that the jokes don't work and I'm not laughing, but it's another thing when there's a whole crowd of people laughing and one of the loudest people laughing is sitting right next to me. Yeah, I, I got nothing else for this movie. It sucks. But at the same time, I kind of expected it to be bad. But the next movie I'm gonna talk about is the second movie where I just felt sad, especially with it being on this list. Number five, Godzilla, City on the Edge of Battle. I count this. It came out in Japanese theaters in May. It came out on Netflix in July, where I saw it the same year. So technically, it does count. And in my eyes, this is the worst Godzilla movie that Toho has made. And that really pains me to say it, because you guys know I love Godzilla. So the fact that one of these movies has to end up on a worst list just kills me inside. But it's boring. The animation is just so stiff that I cannot believe it was ever released in a theater. The main character, Haruo, is not interesting, and he's just downright unlikable, and pulls off some real dick moves, like when he calls for an SOS to pick him and his crew up, but he actually tricks everyone on the space shuttle to come on down and help him kill Godzilla. Godzilla is in this movie less than he was in the last movie, and the biggest sin of all is building up this movie to be a rematch between Godzilla and Mechagodzilla, and then Mechagodzilla's just a city. That was a completely wasted opportunity, especially since you set up Mechagodzilla in the last movie. I hate this movie so much. I mean, it makes me want to go to Godzilla Final Wars and all the other Godzilla movies that I don't like and just apologize because Final Wars, as bad as that movie is, it's at least entertaining. And I'll admit that. This is just boring. It is boring and just a failed experiment. I haven't even seen the third one yet. I'll have a review for it as soon as I see it, but I just think this anime trilogy is just damaged beyond repair. Number four, 
Hellfest. I didn't do a review for this movie on my channel because I did a spoiler review with my good friend, Adorkable Rachel. You can go check out the review on her channel, but the reason this is on my worst of list is because it had a great concept. A killer that goes around a theme park during a Halloween Horror Nights type event and stalks people to just randomly kill, that's creepy, that's imaginative. But ultimately what comes out of this movie are annoying characters uh, to the point where you just can't stand them and you want to get away from these people. A nondescript killer, you don't even know who this guy is. And maybe this is a personal standpoint for me, but there are just so many things in this movie that don't add up when it comes to an actual theme park event because I worked at Halloween Horror Nights before. And the fact that this movie is just completely inaccurate to all the things that would actually happen at these kinds of events just pissed me off. But much like with Winchester, it's not the worst horror movie I've seen this year. That honor goes to... Number three. Slenderman. In Rachel's Hellfest review, I did say, well, we both said that Hellfest is worse than Slenderman, but I actually had some time to think about this movie because Hellfest may have just squandered a very interesting idea, but it had some cool moments here and there. Slenderman has nothing. It's just nothing but a ripoff of other horror movies like Evil Dead, The Ring. None of the characters are interesting. Some of the scares are just downright unintentionally funny. And this is a movie that should have come out at least six or seven years ago. Like, if this movie came out in 2012 when Slender the Eight Pages was a big thing, then I would have been okay with it. But 2018? That is just way too long to make a Slenderman movie. And especially considering the stabbings that happened in real life in 2014, it just doesn't really help the image of this movie. I mean, this movie's not based off the stabbings, and there's nothing in this movie that represents the stabbings. But still, after that incident, people just didn't care about Slenderman. And this is a movie with so many things cut out that it almost becomes nonsensical. It is one of the most baffling horror movies I've seen in a while. It was... Oh boy. Number two. The 1517 to Paris. Look. You've heard everyone who's given a negative review about this movie say this, and I'll repeat it here. I completely respect the thing that these guys did. I mean, these guys who stopped that incident on the train are braver men than I would ever have been. But having the real guys play themselves in the movie based off that event was a terrible idea because they are not actors at all. They lack charisma. Everyone in this movie that's actually a trained actor acts circles around them, even when they're barely in the movie. The dialogue is atrocious. There's a lot of nothing happening, and really the only good part of the movie is the actual event that happens, but it just lasts for about five, maybe ten minutes. Everything else ranges from a generic... Clint Eastwood movie where he has to show off his patriotism, or it turns into Clint Eastwood trying to replicate a Richard Linklater movie where you have characters walking around saying random things and doing nothing, just going through life, and it's awful. Richard Linklater could pull that off. Clint Eastwood, not so much. I didn't see The Mule, which I heard was a little better than this movie, but I feel like Clint Eastwood should retire as a director, because if he's going to continue making movies like this, then... Ooh. But at the very least, it's not the worst movie of the year. Now, all those movies were bad, whether they just made me sad, they infuriated me, they're incompetent, but no movie I've talked about on this worst of list, or even in my dishonorable mentions, could be as bad as... Number one. Action Point. This is a movie that should have come out when Jackass was at its prime, because watching the trailers, I thought... Okay, this is trying to be like Jackass, but just with two cast members, Johnny Knoxville and Chris Pontius. I'm a little too old for that. I've grown a little more mature for Jackass, but it could be funny. No. And I feel like a couple of factors lend itself to this being the worst movie of the year for me. One, I was the only one in the theater when I saw it. So just having that theater by myself was sad, honestly. The movie has no plot. It'll transition to whatever the plot of the movie is, to just random half-assed jackass stunts that aren't creative at all. It's just, 
Let's dose a fire hose on Johnny Knoxville and have him fall backwards on a water slide. Uh, let's have him do other dangerous stunts. Uh, and the one moment in the movie that really tested my patience on wanting to walk out uh, was the scene where Chris Pontius is sneaking into this room where this guy and this girl are having sex. The guy suddenly busts a nut and there's some jizz that falls onto Chris Pontius' hand. And there's a scene later on where a dog is licking that hand with jizz on it and it was that point where I'm like, okay, I, I mentally cannot be here, but I gotta stay. I gotta see where this goes and see if it really is one of the worst movies of the year. And lo and behold, it's at number one. So yeah, Action Point is my least favorite movie of the year. And there you go, those are my top 10 worst movies of 2018. But like I said before, I wanted to get this out of the way so I can end 2018 on a positive note. Check back where I'll be talking about my top 10 favorite movies of 2018. And I got a few picks in here that might surprise you. Some of them might be super obvious, but we'll get into it when we get into it. So now I wanna hear what you guys have to say. If you've seen any of these movies, what did you think? What's in your top 10 worst movies of 2018? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and of course leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page, follow me on social media, and until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.